There was a man who was being beaten by a big tall man. But suddenly he remembered a moment with his son and wife. A year ago, Marcus went out late at night to meet a target at a bar. Actually, he didn't like working at night. But Marcus needed to do it. When he arrived at the bar, he ordered a drink. He noticed three men sitting across from him. Then Marcus followed the three men who went to the toilet. Marcus quickly defeated the three of them without a single wound. He also took a picture of the three men who were already dead. After that, Marcus decided to go home through the back door of the bar. When he got to his base, Marcus took off his fake mustache and beard. Then he uploaded a photo of one of the thugs he killed at the bar. A while later, he went somewhere. He got a call from Mr. X who told him to kill three thugs at the bar. Mr. X asked Marcus for help again tomorrow night. At first, Marcus wanted to refuse because tomorrow was his wedding anniversary. But Mr. X persuaded him until Marcus accepted his request. In the morning, Marcus woke up and joked with his wife, Carla. Then he came over to Carla and Kimberly, his daughter who were in the kitchen. His wife asked about what they were going to do to celebrate their wedding anniversary. Then Marcus took out the tickets that were in his pocket. Carla and Marcus' daughter were very happy to see it. Then Marcus left for work. Marcus received a call from Mr. X who told him that work would start at 8 p.m. Then Marcus went to his home base to get ready to meet his wife and do his work. In the evening, Marcus went to a cafe. He sat on a bench in the far corner while looking at the photo of his target. Then came three men who headed to an alley in the cafe. Marcus followed them. Marcus did not know that Carla had arrived at the cafe. Marcus's wife saw him go into the alley. Then Carla followed Marcus. Marcus searched for the whereabouts of the three men. A few moments later, he found them playing gambling in the room. Marcus' wife kept following Marcus away. But Marcus didn't realize that his wife was behind him. Marcus entered the room. He shot both the guard and the three men. He didn't realize that one of them was still alive and tried to shoot Marcus. Unfortunately, the shot hit Carla Marcus, who was standing at the door. Marcus was heartbroken to see his wife dead. He was angry with himself and regretted his actions. One year later, Marcus woke up for his sleep. He remembered his time with his wife and his daughter. Then he went to the kitchen to meet his mother-in-law, Mrs. Eitkins. Marcus thanked her for moving to Chicago after Carla's death. Mrs. Eitkins answered that she would take care of her granddaughter, Kimberly. She told Marcus to start his life over because she and Kimberly felt that Marcus was unhappy. Mrs. Eitkins added that if Marcus was unhappy, then Kimberly was also unhappy. After his mother-in-law advised him, he reflected on it. When Marcus arrived at his base, he looked at Carla's picture. Marcus stated that he was going to find out who killed her. Shortly afterwards, a black envelope was delivered to Marcus' room. He opened the door hoping to find someone to deliver the envelope. But Marcus found no one outside his base. Marcus opened the black envelope which turned out to have a flash disk in it. The flash disk contained a video from a man named Roman Corza. Roman invited Marcus to eliminate the world's greatest assassin for a fee of $10 million. Roman explained that Marcus had to send a message to register for the job and it would cost him a trip to Tokyo. Marcus returned to his home. Both he and his in-laws were celebrating Kimberly's birthday. Marcus gave her a birthday cake and presents. While making a wish, Kimberly said she wanted her father to be happy. Then Marcus replied that he was happy as long as he had Kimberly. At Marcus' base, he was looking for news about Carla's investigation via the internet. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door, and it turned out to be Roman Corza. Marcus asked how he could find his base. Then Corza replied that his team was looking for Marcus' whereabouts. Corza said that he knew Marcus was actually interested in his offer to get rid of the world's greatest assassin, George Dracos. In addition, Corza also knew that Carla was killed. But Marcus said that he had left his job as a professional assassin a long time ago. Corza tried to persuade him. He said that Kimberly and Marcus' lives would be guaranteed. Then Corza gave his business card hoping that Marcus would agree to his offer. Later, he received news that Kimberly was hospitalized. Marcus went straight to the hospital. He saw Kimberly lying limp on the bed. Then Dr. Dean, the head of cardiac pediatrics, said that Kimberly had a problem with her heart that could lead to heart failure.
Then Kimberly woke up and called Marcus. Marcus said that they would be together forever. He also said that he would take care of Kimberly. After Kimberly went back to sleep, Marcus called Corza. Marcus accepted Corza's offer. Then Marcus went to see Mr. X. Marcus said that he got an offer to eliminate George Dracos. Mr. X was surprised to cure it because he knew Dracos was difficult to defeat. In addition, he knew that Marcus was looking for the perpetrator who killed Carla. Marcus explained that he needed money for Kimberly who needed a new heart. Mr. X offered his savings to Marcus, but naturally Marcus refused because he knew Mr. X had to support his family. Then Marcus asked for his help to find detailed information about Dracos. Marcus went to Tokyo, Japan to start his work. Corza welcomed Marcus at a hotel. Then Corza and Marcus went to the penthouse accompanied by Corza's secretary named Wino. Once at the penthouse, Marcus saw that there were several people. Marcus thought he would be working alone, but it turned out that he was working with those people. Corza contacted their employer through a video call shown on the LCD screen. Their employer did not mention his name. He immediately read out the qualifications of each person, including Marcus. The man said that Marcus was a U.S. intelligence community multidisciplinary with a personal service company option until the accident took Carla. Then the employer read out the qualifications of Scott Angus, a G2 member who was ousted for misconduct. Then Ashikana was a member of MI6 for 15 years until she got tired of the rat race. Edward Dyson, former Navy reconnaissance commander for the Elite Dark Stores unit and NSA sweeper. Rick Nigel, a freelance ASIS employee who almost shot himself. Then there was Rand who was trained by Mayakjo the Japanese protector, until his loyalties changed and he started working for the highest bidder. Finally, there's Zachary Hebron, a freelance sniper for a private military company. Following orders is not his fort. The employer said that this was a competition between them, so they needed to compete and try to find Dracos first. Hebron decided to quit the competition, but sadly, he was shot dead. The employer said that they would not be able to back out of this job. The employer expects them to give it their all. Marcus said that he and his friends didn't know Dracos' face. Then Ren guessed that the man who claimed to be the employer was Dracos. Then the employer confessed that he was Dracos. He claimed he was great because he had defeated all but the hitmen like Marcus, Ren, Asha, Nigel, Scott, and Asher to know who was the best. Dracos added the information that their task was to kill Dracos, the king of assassins. Marcus and the others were silent for a moment. Then Dracos told them to rest and prepare within 24 hours. They got access to all the facilities that Dracos had. Dracos warned them that if they did not succeed in killing him, they would be killed. Then Dracos invited them to have a casual meal in the lobby. After Dracos ended his video call, Corza warned them that someone was watching their movements. Then Marcus entered one of the rooms. He looked for any hidden cameras or voice recorders in his room. Suddenly, Asha came. It turned out that Marcus and Asha knew each other. Asha once asked Marcus to leave the alphabet group. Asha asked if Marcus had any information about Dracos. Then Marcus replied that all he knew was that Dracos prevented him from getting the prize. Asha knew that Marcus had information about Dracos. Then Marcus said that all he knew was that Dracos was in control of the territory and its rules. Marcus pointed out that the window on the side was not a window, but a monitor. He also added that he had to win the prize. In the evening, the contestants attended the dinner invitation that Dracos promised, but Dracos didn't show up. Dracos only appeared on the video call. He just wanted the killers to have a good rest. After Dracos ended his video call, the assassins talked. They asked what made the contract offered by Dracos different from the ones they had taken before. Suddenly, Marcus' cell phone rang. Kimberly was calling him. Marcus came out of the dining room to talk to Kimberly. Marcus realized that Asha was watching him. Then Asha approached Marcus. She tried to start a conversation with Marcus. Suddenly, Asha took out her hairpin. Then Asha tried to stab Marcus in the neck. But Marcus was able to ward it off. Asha said that the fewer the number of them, the greater the chance of winning. Marcus didn't care about Asha's words, he focused on beating Asha. Until Marcus was able to make Asha powerless.
In the morning, the participants were seen practicing martial arts and preparing their weapons, except for Marcus. Marcus dreams about being with his son and wife. After that, the participants gathered at the penthouse. Corza gave them the weapons they needed. Then the participants pick coins randomly. Participants with low-value coins will fight first. The participant with the highest coin fights at the end. They took their own coins. Bren got coin number 5, Nigel got number 7, Cord 8, Asha 2, Angus 6, and Marcus got the lowest coin. However, Angus exchanged his coin with Marcus' coin so that he could fight first. Angus rushed to find Dracos. Angus' action was displayed through the LCD in the participant room so that other participants could see Angus fighting Dracos. Angus stopped in a room. He saw Dracos there, so he shot him. Unfortunately, it was only Dracos in 3D. Then Dracos approached Angus, who was sitting down. He fought Angus with both his pistols. Angus tried several times to fight Dracos, but he failed. Dracos was quick and clever in his movements. Then Dracos set off a bell that made Angus' ears bleed and his body tremble. Angus began to get frustrated because Draco suddenly disappeared and suddenly appeared. Until finally Dracos managed to defeat Angus. Marcus and the other participants began to feel uneasy and worried. Marcus said that Dracos set up the game in such a way. Marcus said that Dracos was a gambler who liked high stakes. Then Marcus added that they would not win because the owner always wins. He suggested that Dracos fight all four of them at once and the prize would be shared equally. Only Nigel rejected Marcus' suggestion. As Nigel was about to leave for the fight, Marcus negotiated with Dracos. Marcus offered that the participants would fight Dracos simultaneously. Dracos refused at first. Marcus said that Dracos was the king of assassins who should be very good at fighting. He continued to persuade him. He praised him by saying Dracos was the king and the king was willing to bet. Finally, Dracos agreed to Marcus' offer, but he had one condition, which was that he would only fight four of the five participants. That meant one of them had to be eliminated. Suddenly, Nigel attacked Marcus, but Asha scolded them. Asha said Atrod had already left to meet Dracos. Inside the elevator, Atrod heard Dracos' voice from the speakers. Dracos told him that he had information about all the bad things that Atrod did as an agent. Then Dracos asked if it was all true. Hearing that, Atrod felt upset. Then he looked for Dracos. This time, the battlefield was set up like a prison cell. Egrid saw Dracos in the form of a 3D image. He thought it was a trap, but it turned out that Dracos was behind the picture. Dracos attacked him with a sword. Atrid hit him with a gun. But suddenly the room lights went off quickly. This overwhelmed Atrid. He threw Dracos down several times. Then Dracos attacked using a small knife blade, which caused Atrid severe injuries. Dracos even stamped him multiple times, until Atrid died on the spot. Then Marcus told his friends to get ready. He also ordered the phone to be active in radio mode. They took their weapons and went up the elevator. They got to the third floor, but Nigel got out first and chose to split up. Then Marcus, Ren, and Asha just got out of the third floor elevator, but Dracos threw a bomb that made the participants thrown and injured. Marcus told them to get back together. But Asha was thrown into the elevator that went to the tenth floor. Asha arrived at the tenth floor. She was careful in stepping. Meanwhile, Ren was in a hallway. Then he took out his samurai. Finally, Ren and Marcus are back together. Asha was still on the 10th floor looking for Dracos. Suddenly, Dracos came and tied Asha's neck. Asha tried her best to escape from the rope. Asha attacked Dracos with her knife, smacking him in the face. But Dracos was able to get out of the way until Asha fell. Then Dracos stabbed Asha in the stomach and kicked her to the stairs until Asha died. Marcus and Ren decide to separate. Marcus found Wino, Corzo's secretary, sitting in the room. Marcus saw her carrying samurais. Then Marcus went to her. Wino attacked Marcus with fiery enthusiasm. Marcus took out his knife and fought Wino. A few minutes later, Marcus managed to kill the woman by stabbing her in the neck. Then Marcus left that woman. He walked on the stairs and found Asha, who had died. Marcus immediately informed Ren that Asha was dead.
Wren walked down the hallway. Then he heard Draco's voice saying that Wren was on a path of revenge that led to him being in debt to the wrong people. Finally, they met in real life. Wren was annoyed by his words. He claimed that Draco's tricks and illusions would not work on Wren. He also knew that Dracos was the one who killed his father, Sulihiro. Dracos did not accept the accusation. Ren didn't want to be compared to Dracos. Ren said he killed for work, while Dracos killed for sport. Finally, they fight using samurai. A few moments later, Dracos injured both of Ren's legs, but Ren continued the fight. Then Ren hit Dracos several times. He even managed to stab Dracos in the chest, but he kept fighting against Ren. Ren almost managed to kill Dracos. Sadly, when Ren got ready to step on Dracos, Ren's foot was hit by Dracos' samurai. Then Dracos killed Ren easily. Marcus is looking for Ren's whereabouts. Suddenly someone pushed Marcus until he fell. It turned out that he was Nigel. Nigel repeatedly hit Marcus' face until Marcus almost lost to Nigel. But when he was in a crucial situation, he remembered the good times with Carla and Kimberly. It energized Marcus. He kicked Nigel hard. Some Nigel's head went into a big fan in the room and he died. Marcus returned to find Ren's location. Until he reached a large room. He was shocked to see Ren who was killed with severe injuries. Marcus realized that he was the only one left among the three participants. Marcus went to see Dracos. He saw Dracos sitting and holding his sword. Dracos told him about the Sultan of Arabia who assigned hundreds of men to do dirty work. The Arabian Sultan tested his loyalty until the word assassin or Hashishin came up, which means assassin. Marcus thanked Dracos for telling history. Then Marcus warned Dracos to enjoy the moment of the last fight he felt. As Marcus placed his weapon on the table, Dracos also placed his samurai on the back of the chair. Dracos said that he was sure from the beginning that only Marcus could fight him. Dracos wants Marcus to do the job for him, but Marcus firmly said that he did not want the title King of Killers. Suddenly Dracos picked up the gun that was behind his chair. He tried to shoot Marcus, but he managed to get away. Marcus hid behind a chair which was filled with weapons. He took two small guns and shot Dracos in the chest. Dracos was still able to get up. He picked up his gun and was about to step on a button that could cause bleeding ears but Marcus swiftly kicked Dracos down. Just as Marcus was about to shoot him, Dracos turned off the room lights. After that, Marcus heard Dracos voice talking about the death of Carla, Marcus' wife. Dracos said that every night Marcus must feel guilty about her death. Marcus was momentarily distracted by Dracos' words. While he was distracted, Dracos attacked him with a knife. With the lights flickering, Marcus tried to keep fighting Dracos. Eventually, Dracos fell down. Then Marcus saw the remote control used to control the lights. Marcus stepped on it, and finally the lights turned on. Marcus lifted and released Dracos on the glass. Dracos took a large enough piece of glass and stamped the glass in Marcus' chest. But Marcus can hold Dracos' stab. Marcus almost killed Dracos with a piece of glass. Suddenly, Carzo came and pointed a gun at Marcus. Carzo said that Marcus was the winner. He deserved a prize. Marcus was confused because he felt he had not killed Dracos. Then Dracos said that he needed a partner to defeat an international group of assassins. The group could destroy the world and establish a new world order. Dracos said that that was the reason why he killed all those people. But Marcus wants to be with his daughter. Dracos wanted to work with Marcus anyway. He said he would be in touch with him. Then Marcus returned to Chicago. Six months have passed. Marcus was having lunch with his daughter at a restaurant. Moments later, Marcus got a video message. The video showed that Mr. X had killed Carla while Marcus was working in the room one year ago. Then Dracos met Marcus. He was surprised to see Dracos there. Dracos said that that video message was true. He added that Mr. X or Marcus' best mentor was cruel. Marcus was annoyed. Then Draco said that the person who recruited Marcus' friends called himself Simidor. Simidor was what Dracos meant as part of an international group of killers. Dracos asked if Marcus was ready to fight them. However, Marcus answered that he needed to set some rules to protect his daughter, Kimberly.